still stains when the sheets are washed. Sex don't sleep when the lights are off. Yo! <laughs> I listened to this album more than any other album last year. Thanks. Really? This was your album of 2016, huh? Yeah, even though it came out in 2015. I don't know if I can speak to anything like that. No, Aesop. Aesop's Impossible Kid was pretty big when it came out. I feel like albums don't last anymore. I listened to that the first couple of weeks and I knew it was incredible and it was genius and then a bunch of other shit came out. <laughs> you know? I think probably the biggest thing last year might have been the Camplo instrumental for Cooley High for me because it took me so long to get that shit done. You know, we should I remember do a, listening to that shit. We should do a comparison video with those verses, like play some of that verse and then play some of yours side by side. Yeah. To really point that out, because no one's ever gonna. They don't. I mean, half the people never heard that song. So, what about Melanie though? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I think she's a very talented artist. I enjoy it. I love her dark side. I, I, don't, I don't know if I can ever like get enough of that. She's not your typical pop star. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so what's keeping you from playing? Is it because it's so poppy? Probably other music. You know what I'm saying? Like there's other music that I would rather, in, rather listen to or I would enjoy listening to than, than listening to this. I mean, this is it's good. Um, it's great. From my it's great. Yeah. I like pop music though. And all these beats, as soon as they come out, I just, I want to do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> and her lyrics are the shit on top of it, and her voice is good. So to me, like, I'm a sucker for that. Like, any female vocals over a beat that I can fuck with, that's like my shit. I suppose Portishead would kind of be the same, like that. It would be Love that for me. Portishead. You know what I'm saying? Love Portishead. Just the ambiance and those, those beats, that music, her voice voice her voice is crazy i listened to slick rick the artist storytelling today and i totally forgot that he sampled porter said on one of his tracks what yeah. what song i i don't know i don't remember but you knew it when you heard it. oh yeah absolutely that's absolutely. crazy i never i never noticed that yeah that album that's like rick album is shit. <laughs> i know when i seen that title had drops to, find ways not to fall on rick's head when uh <laughs> when i seen that title had a clean version of the album i'm like Fuck yes, I can play it at work. This is gold. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I remember the song he makes a lot of whole references and shit like that. The song with Raekwon, I remember being the shit. The song with Outkast is shit. He's got a song with Nas too. Isn't there somebody like featured on every song? Big name rapper. Yeah, there's a lot of songs to where it's like no one's better than Slick Rick and his feature. <laughs> <laughs> like me and Nas, bring it to your heart. Yes, yes. But that's the shit though, it didn't even matter. Yeah. See, that's the thing, I wish more rappers did that. Like, I like that they do that nowadays. Like, I just noticed, I mean, all artists really, like Banks just put out a new song even though she has a new album out and the song's not on the album. And then Lady Gaga just did the same thing. Yeah. And back in the day, I always, I know you probably remember me bitching to you about this. Why doesn't Eminem put out mixtapes? Put out some fucking mixtapes. How much rap from Eminem have we not heard? Imagine how much, dude. But there was a lot of shit he that he takes himself too out. seriously. Yeah. He could have done a themed mixtape. He could have done something like we're doing. I'm going to do a new song every month. This shit would have went platinum regardless. But I heard his verse on Thurston Howell's These Nuts on like two other beats that were mixtape-esque verses. You know what I'm saying? I just heard him rap that verse over something. Same thing with that mix. It could be a DJ taking like an acapella from a radio station yeah. and mixing it. I, he had a lot of shit like that. Or even that verse that he shit, had on right? Missy Elliott's album. I, know I just remember the roll of quarters. Yeah. Something about controlling corners. Yeah, that we it was from a radio station freestyle. Girl. We used to have that C D with all those Eminem freestyles, remember early yeah. on. And that was him at radio stations spitting whatever verses he had. Yeah. So those ended up on other And things. like those Detroit Underground albums, like when all that beef was going down with him and Royce and all that Benzino shit. Oh dude, his diss songs are the best ever. I don't care what no one says. Everyone talks about he didn't have good opponents. I don't give a fuck. Those Here. diss songs are the hardest disses ever. Nobody's <laughs> diss songs are better than Eminem's as facts. I don't give a fuck. Full circle though, when I was listening to uh, The Art of Storytelling, like the last few tracks are live songs where he does like Lottie Dottie in another song and I was pointing out to my dude at work you listen to this you can hear how other rappers are biting his shit like Lottie Dottie and Snoop Dogg you know what I'm saying like Snoop Dogg redid re Lottie Dottie that's Dottie. not biting I'm that's sorry. Like paying homage call it what you will <laughs> but anyways um, 
hypnotized. Like he does this, like Biggie used hypnotized from bars from Slick Rick, and kind of the same thing. In his uh, verse or in the hook? It's from his verse, yeah. And then the second song where he does live, I can't remember what it's called. It's where he says six minutes Slick Rick and you're on. Eminem yeah. says that. Oh six yeah. Minutes, Slim Shady, you're and on. And he's doing it because he knows yeah. that you know what he's referencing. Yeah. I mean, I don't think everyone knows because when I mentioned no, that, everyone doesn't know Slick Rick. When I mentioned that, he's like, I, I had no. Idea. I love being able to point shit out like that. No, people have uh, did the Lottie Dottie thing numerous times. There's more than what you just mm. pointed out. I mean, right. that's one of the most classic songs ever in hip hop. All of the early, like, old Slick Rick first album. So welcome to the side dish. In case you didn't know, Melanie Martinez' Sippy Cup is our song for... April, and it's 2017, and I actually wrote this originally in March of 2016. Yeah. Yeah. This was my choice. Yep. It, it was no actually, pick. this isn't a typical side dish because we've had this done and we know each other's verses. I had to use <laughs> this because this is just one of the first things that I randomly did to an industry song. Just another track that we've been sitting on, might as well just put it out. Put them all on. Put them all We don't put out albums. We put out one song a month. You know why? Because we're fucking innovative. <laughs> That's what we do. Word. Did you adjust the ISO? Do we need to? Mm. We probably did. You want me to turn it up? Yo. What was the first pair of name brand shoes that you've ever owned? Name brand shoes? You have to remember this, because I know Probably. you was rocking buddies like me up to a certain point. First ones that I remember, I remember rocking British Knights. Like, that's my first pair of name brand shoes. I, I, yeah, I think that's right. It's hard to get past like the Ninja Turtles with We're the Velcro. We're right now. <laughs> Ninja Turtles with the Velcro shoes, the, with the lights or whatever, but I think British Knights were the first pair of name brand shoes. That, I that was technically my first pair of name brand shoes, but my first pair of super, like, that I was super hyped on shoes, though, was the Bo Jackson shoes from Nike with the little strap across the top of them. They were, like, black and white. You probably don't know what they're. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> my memory is fucking terrible. You're digging. You're reaching far. Like I remember one shell toes, like all all white, white on white shell toes, and that was my fucking pride and joy. But that again, that was later on in life. And then a pair of K Swiss. I never owned a pair of shell toes. I don't even fuck with shell toes like that. I, was I respect so the shell toe, but I don't want to wear the shell toe. The, the, <laughs> the white on white shell toes that I had is like they just stopped making them. They just stopped making them. It was very very upsetting. Cream of wheat or cocoa wheats. Cocoa weeds all day. That's not even a question. Yeah, I grew up on cocoa weeds too, but you can't front on cocoa weeds. But you know, no, I do fuck with cream of weed though. I don't want to say it like that. I don't want to disrespect <laughs> cream of weed. But cocoa weeds was that shit. And you know what? Cocoa weeds really isn't that good. No, no. <laughs> if you're eating that shit now, I feel bad for you. I feel bad for you. I mean, I'm sure your kids are enjoying it. I don't man, know. That was... it, I feel like it didn't even, you just wanted it to think that it tasted good, but it just didn't. I mean, it wasn't you... as good as cereal. It wasn't Cocoa Krispies. No. I mean, apples and oranges, bro. Like, it's it's, still, it's hot things. cereal, man. Hot cereal and cold cereal is not apples and oranges. It's like apples and like green apples. <laughs> <laughs> it's like gala apples and pink lady apples. Yo, what's your favorite word? My favorite word? A word that you just love to say. You just use it all the fucking time. Aside from fuck. Is that what you're saying? That could be it. I don't know if that's my favorite. Aside from fuck though. Word. Like the fa your favorite word to just throw in that. And when you throw it in, you're thinking like people don't normally say this. I'm stunting on y'all in this conversation. I think, I think, <laughs> I think uh, right now, um, I think initially. Initially, is, initially. Something, is something I've been throwing around. Dude, that's such a, a significant while, answer. For a while. I did not know what you were going to say. Like, uh, <laughs> like what, what, what did you think about today's lunch? Well, initially, I, I thought it was. I thought it was pretty good, but after I got a few bites in, I was like, hard, hard, no, hard pass. Initially, yeah, I think I've been throwing that around a lot lately. I don't know about a favorite, favorite word. That's, That's your favorite word. That's what you came up with. Mine is stellar. 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 People ask me how I'm doing. Stellar. Stellar. Okay, That's shoot. a good, that's a good response. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a classic. You know, you can't, you can't front on the classic. You really can't, you know? Shoot. Stu, this is for you. What's your, what, what's the best Wu-Tang album in your opinion? Uh, it's Wu-Tang forever. That's not an opinion, that's a fact. Okay. You agree. Hey, I... I know you agree. I, uh... The, the most... I mean, that's if we're talking group albums. The Wu Tang album if that you're I talking just to, the group Wu Tang albums. I mean, because the solo albums are all better. No, than all Wu, group Wu Tang, 
Wu Tang. Wu Tang album. It's Wu Tang Forever. Okay. And the W is probably second. Yeah, I know. Iron Flag is third. I've listened and to. And then 36 Chambers, Stu. How does that make you feel? <laughs> I've listened to the W more than any other Wu Tang album. I've listened to Iron Flag a lot. Uh, I probably listened to both of those albums more than I've listened to Wu Tang Forever. The W and Iron Flag more than Wu Tang Forever? Yup. Black Shampoo? Yup. They made a song about like being in a bubble bath with a bitch. <laughs> I was listening to Wu Block today. Your shirt looked like a curtain. And and uh, and Sheik Luch and Ghostface have a song to where they're rapping to their gun. <laughs> like like I'm, I'm tucking it in. I'm making sure that it's warm before it goes to bed. And I'm reading it bedtime stories. Like this I, shit dude, is hilarious. I fucking love. I was gonna say that I love fucking Sheik Luch because he's the only rapper that can start a verse with like I won't run up and punch you in the face. I think Kevin Robin starts his verse off in one of the songs. Hey, yo, I jump on stage with my dick in my hand. Kevin <laughs> is the shit. He rapped, I think that's him. Dude, I think he that's rapped him. about being at some like some chick's house or something, and like the dude comes home and he like hits him with the dude's bowling trophy off the mantle. That's a real thing in a Capadonna verse, dude. Capadonna is mad underrated. What was the question? <laughs> The best Wu Tang album. Oh, in it's Wu Tang Forever. In, in your eyes, so. it's not close. The, but the soul albums are all better. And Wu Tang, uh, people who think the or end of the, uh, Thirty Six Chambers is the best Wu Tang album are the same people who think Eminem's first album is his best album. And those people are stupid. <laughs> Hear what he's calling y'all? He's calling y'all stupid. It's the growth. It's the growth I... in rhyming ability. Like I don't care. That's why I like old school hip hop. Like I respect it. I'm not listening to it. I'm not listening to Run DMC. And they're one, two rhymes and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Royce exists. Why would I listen to that? You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how I felt about, you know, the pop music that the pop music question you were asking about earlier is what steers me away from listening to Melanie Martinez's album. There's other shit out there that I, I can enjoy. More progressive and more experimental. Yeah, or more something that speaks to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, I listen to a lot of shit, like a lot of different shit. Well, this shit's, this shit, I feel like this shit does speak to me. No, I'm not saying it doesn't, but there's other music that speaks to me more. You know what I'm saying? I could see that. See, my thing is, I'm the opposite with genres outside of hip-hop. Like, in hip-hop, I want the shit to be as technically proficient as possible. Outside of hip-hop, I don't really understand, like, music and shit. I'm all about lyrics. So outside of hip-hop, it's like, it's all about the sound. Like, does the shit sound good? How does it make me feel? Type of thing. Hip-hop's the only genre where I'm, like, picking it apart. I don't pick apart other music. I'm liable to, like, any fucking song from an outside genre, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not criticizing it like that. What I was talking about earlier today, Eminem's second album was perfect time. Timing. Perfect timing. Dude, like he the got... shit that was going on in the world, or at least in the in the US, like the shit that was going on, not that it was a good thing, it was great timing for Dude, him. I mean, aside from it being his second album and his growth, as you mentioned. The growth is crazy. The way he rides the beat on the second album is the way that you know Eminem. It's not track with, from the first album. He's got that track with RBX and, and Sticky Fingers. Oh, uh, Sticky Fingers verse on there is yeah, crazy. Yeah. I, my block right bust is my whole block rusher. You cannot touch us. Oh, Sticky Fingers, what one of the best deliveries of all time. Yeah. That's facts. The growth between Eminem's first album and the second album is insane. That's why it's, I never listened to the first album. I mean, I got nostalgia in it. Yeah. But like, if I'm thinking, if I'm gonna listen to Eminem, it's the second album and the third album. Okay, Marshall Mathers LP and the Eminem show. That's prime Eminem. And newer Eminem, I've been disappointed numerous times. Yeah, You're okay. Wrong. Okay. You're wrong. If you could travel anywhere in the world for free, or you is just rich and you can just go, like, where's the first place? Ireland. Go? Ireland. I would go to Ireland. Yep. To the rolling hills. I just think it would be so serene out there and so relaxing. I never thought about it that. Would be, that would be dope. It would be amazing. It'd be a lot to take in. I don't know if I'd want to come home and I've never even been there. <laughs> Live off the land. I kind of want to take your answer, but my answer was <laughs> London. Like, I want to go to London. I'm sure that's that'd be dope Mainly too. because of the accent. I love it. <laughs> You've got go dumb though. I, I would go there and try to Damn. pretend that I was British and just tell everyone how much of a goddamn nerd that was. <laughs> <laughs> the first album that you ever owned. You know, it'll make it more interesting. The first album on each platform, like cassette, CD, digital. I used to steal a lot of my sister's CDs. 
So that's, that's what up, Krista? Said. I remember stealing her Beastie Boys album all the time. The one with Sabotage on it, I'm guessing. Uh, no, it was Licensed to Ill. So it had Girls, it had... Was it when it came out, when it was new? No. Okay. No. The first album, I think, I was playing that shit today, too, was uh, I'm the Rapper, He's the DJ. The Fresh, Fresh Prince, Prince. And Jazzy Jeff. And Jazzy Jeff, yes. I'm not mad at that at all. Charlie Max, first out the limo. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was fun to listen to. And, I mean, it was probably more so because of that that uh, Nightmare on, on My Street track that I liked. Maybe it was because it was a dark track. Fresh Prince had a dark track? It was about fucking Freddy Krueger. But was he was about... still sounding all yeah. hokey dokey on that Oh, one. sure. <laughs> I was playing one of those 90s playlists on Title Today and Men in Black, the song, okay. was on this playlist. When the chorus came on, I... You moved your damn ass, didn't Yeah, you? I was... <laughs> I was satisfied with the song. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that was. That was your first cassette tape, or that was a CD. Yeah. Do you remember owning any? No, I take tapes? that back. I had cassette tapes. I, that was probably my first rap. I think Michael Jackson off the wall was probably one of my first tapes. Fucking you. Yeah. I'm, and I remember Michael Jackson off the wall, MC Hammer. What was that? Please don't hurt him, Hammer or whatever. Please don't please hurt him. Please Hammer don't hurt him. Yeah. Please Hammer don't hurt him. I just heard you can't touch um, him today too. Tell me, have you seen how I seen her? That re that oh, remix that he did. That's the second album. Some, uh, because he did that track on the Adams Family soundtrack yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. That um, video was nuts. Remember his dude had the hair that was just like plastered up into it like a triangle and shit? Like that was nuts. I remember having the Ninja Turtles 2 soundtrack on Go cassette. Ninja Go? Yeah. Oh, that's the only song that was played. I think I wrote those lyrics out too. Remember we were talking vanilla about that? Vanilla Ice? Yeah, yeah. I wrote those dude, lyrics out Dude, I had the Vanilla Ice shit, I'm not gonna lie, but I did not write down his lyrics. Um, yeah, I think those were the first few. I, I remember having Thriller. I had Thriller on cassette too. Did you, well, okay, what about CD? What was the first CD that you that you didn't steal from your sister? That was hard because I remember purchased. taking advantage of, uh, what is that, BMI? When you could order yeah. a bunch of CDs That's and shit. I like I would just make, I would just make fake names and shit, and I'd get like, I'd make like three different names, and you can order you like ten CDs. Penny, right? Yeah, twelve yeah. for a penny or whatever. And I'd get like 24. That's how I built my whole collection. My whole hip hop. I had like yeah. 80 hip hop CDs and it was all from BMO. And then you go to Allied and sell all that shit and get money for I it. I did sell them all. <laughs> yeah, that's hard to say. Uh, my first what was your first CD? digital album then? Digital did album? Did you ever buy anything from like iTunes or Amazon or whatever? Um, or did you just skip over that and you were just like... No, I remember downloading a bunch of shit. I don't remember ever buying a full album. I think one of the last albums that I bought though was... It was either The Weeknd's Kissland or... Um, Hippocampus. I think it might have been Hippocampus, their EP. It has Suicide Saturday on there. That's that's a that's a tasty jam. <laughs> nice. Uh, before I stopped buying CDs, the only thing that I bought was Kanye, Jay-Z, and Ghostface. Those are like the, uh, those are like the only CDs I bought like over a, quite a span was just CDs that they put out. Um, and my first cassette tapes, all at the same time. LL Cool J Bad, Top Gun soundtrack, which is fucking amazing, <laughs> and White Snake, Love on the Rocks, which is also equally amazing. You don't need a rock ballads compilation, you just need White Snake. <laughs> fucking Top Gun soundtrack. <laughs> How Danger do you Zone, fuck Kenny with Loggins. that? Kenny Loggins. How do you fuck with that? Kenny Loggins from, with the Danger Zone, it was so good. Man, they were, I'm going, I used I'm to think that Tom fucking... Cruise was cool. Memory lane. When I was young watching Top Gun, I thought Tom Cruise was like the coolest dude ever. And then I grew up and it was like, he's a Scientologist and a total weirdo. And then my first CDs, my very first CD, Ski Low. I wish I was a little bit taller. I yeah. wish I was a baller. I wish I had a girl yeah. who was good. That comes on my Pandora station so a good. lot. And then also right around that time was Domino's Ghetto Jam. Do you remember Domino? The Ghetto Jam is about to slam. Oh, so no, fuck yeah. That was my yeah. shit. I love that shit so much. And then um, first digital, the only digital album I think I ever purchased was Lord. Okay. Oh, no, actually, I bought Boom the Bomb's album, too. There you go, Boom the Bomb. I bought two digital albums, and one of them is yours. <laughs> it speaks to how good your shit is. Yeah, I, I can talk about that shit all day. Um... I know when we get into our YouTube roulette, I think the last few times played MC Brains, Uchi Coochie, La La La. <laughs> I remember taking that tape from my sister because she had the cassette single. Oh, dude, I had um, Paper Boys, what I thought was his album. Remember Diddy? Do the Diddy Diddy. Yeah. One, two. This motherfucker put out a CD that was just remixes of Diddy. I had a full 
CD, 13 songs on it, all remixes of that one song. It's the only song I've ever heard from him. That's how that summer summertime song is for Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff. A bunch of remixes? Yeah, yeah. I used to have the Fresh Prince CD with Boom Shake the Room on it. <laughs> boom, boom, shake, shake the room. <laughs> yup. Damn, I can go on for hours about that. All right, so let's, let's, all right, so since we're on the topic of music still, what is your favorite movie soundtrack? You already talked about Top Gun earlier. Yeah, so Top Gun is one. How do you um, beat that? I used to fuck with only Bone Thugs and Harmony. Like, there was a point. Oh, so you're talking about Batman, huh? Talking about Batman Forever? They're on that? No, no, not that one. Um, but there was a point where, like, I, I started off listening to just whatever popular rap music there was. And then when I discovered Bone, I only liked Bone. And if you didn't rap fast like them, I did not fuck with you. And then if you rap fast like them, you were biting them, and I did not <laughs> fuck with you. I only fucked with Bone. That was it for a few years. Um, and I would buy... Well, you, did you try to rap like Bone? No, I can't rap like Bone. <laughs> no, I meant in that in that period. Where... Well, no, my, I used to write out their lyrics. Okay. That was some of the first raps I ever wrote, was yeah. trying to write down their lyrics. Like, I would sit there rewinding the CDs and shit, trying to re, uh, figure out what the fuck they were saying. I'm sure I had it all wrong. But I fucked with Bone only so heavy that I would buy every album they were featured on. And they were featured on a couple soundtracks. Now, my favorite soundtrack is based off of that because I didn't usually buy soundtracks. But it would be the Great White Hype soundtrack. Okay. And they had their song Shoot 'em Up on there. But actually, my favorite Bone song of all time is um, Days of Our Lives from the Set It Off soundtrack. Do you remember that song, Days of Our Lives? Uh, that song's so I, good. I don't know. I, I don't it's know. It's so good. I used to get so hyped when the video it was It sounds familiar. On. Yeah, so I'm going to go with the Great White I Hype. Didn't know. Also, the show soundtrack is actually dope as fuck, too, now that I think about it. You don't you don't have reason. one that like just stands out like I know you're talking about no. following and follow, following them as as artists. No, I mean it would have to be like that's all I could go to is like the Great White Hype soundtrack because they met the man had a song on there too that was fucking nasty as fuck. It's called the uh, Bring White the Hype, Pain. Huh? I think Bring the Pain is the one from his album actually, but it was on that soundtrack. Too. Mine still to this day the Crow soundtrack. I knew you were gonna say that. Um, Smashing pumpkins. We talked. We talked about this, I, and I had to bring it up. That's why I was looking at it on my phone earlier, so that way I can I can comment because there's a few that I that I recognize or not recognize but remember. But every, every song on there I, I really like. The, the Cure is on there. I love the Cure. Nine Inch Nails. I was to the Cure greatest uh, that works. Rage time. Against the Machine, Violent Femmes, Rollins Band. So Henry Rollins is on there. This Helmet, is, this Pantera. Is so your white side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my life with the Thrill Kill Cult. Like those songs were so good and. They paired so well with the movie, like it was, it was great. Did you fuck with Sting, the wrestler? Sting? Oh, uh, no, I, he was I, like hated that. I hated you hated that. that? <laughs> I hated that. Much like Bone, like if you were biting Bone, like I didn't fucking oh, like okay. it, or you didn't like it. So, because he was pretty much the crow. Yeah. Was, like, what he was. Um, but I think the only other soundtrack that I I enjoyed that much, the Natural Born Killer soundtrack too, because it, it was probably because Nine Inch Nails or Trent Reznor was a big part of those that Dog Pound track. Man, when that song comes on, it mm, is it on their mm, album or is it exclusive? I think it's on the Dog Pound album okay. or their single or something. But I think all soundtracks should be there. nothing but exclusive albums or exclusive songs. tracks. Yeah, for sure, for sure. For and sure. speaking of that, um, my boy Fantano, he does a, a weekly video where he does the best and worst tracks of the week and tracks that were just kind of all right. Yeah. He cleared out the whole worst track section except for one song for the Fate of the Furious soundtrack. <laughs> So it's, it must be as bad as the movie that I assume is just terrible. <laughs> like I did glance at the track list for that soundtrack. And then and my boss, like, my boss sent me lyrics, sent me rap lyrics that I thought he came up with. And I was like, yeah, that's all right, but you gotta, it wasn't a double rhyme pattern. It was like the most basic shit ever. And I was like, but you gotta rhyme like both syllables of the pattern or whatever. And I gave him examples. And he was like, no, it's from the Fate of the Furious soundtrack. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Oh my dear lord. Because <laughs> he loves the Fast and the Furious movies, so of course he's fucking listening to this terrible soundtrack. You got one more, right? Yeah, um, favorite musician non-hip-hop. That's perfect uh, timing, actually, so. Yeah, and uh, it's just funny because I was, I was having I'm a lot of I'm thinking these... you're going to say Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Are you going to say Nine Inch Nails? I said, I've had a lot, a lot of these, I've answered a lot of these in just general conversations today. Yeah. Where, um, <laughs> well, I had to change shit because of the conversation we had the other night. Like, yeah. I changed, like, a bunch of shit after that because I already, we already talked about it. Non hip hop, probably, yeah, Nine Inch Nails or Trent Reznor. With Nine Inch Nails. Or oh, I thought you might say Tool. Yes, but not as much. I mean, Nine Inch Nails catalog is way bigger than just Tool as a band. Obviously, Maynard is a part of several different bands, but 
Nine Inch Nails as a group. Um, I know, again, Trent Reznor has done uh, some kind of side projects, you know, like How to Destroy Angels. He's done that project with his wife, and then he's done, like, movie soundtracks with Atticus Ross, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, or that Facebook movie, The and Social do Network. Do you fuck with everything, all of that shit that he does? Yeah, I love his sound. It's hard for me to ignore. I will say, like, and this his is last few... technically industrial music. That's what that genre is, I, right? Yeah. I, initially, yes, I would think that's industrial. It's probably got several different adjectives or different different well i'm talking about back when you know back in the day right okay <laughs> yeah where it's just like noise like music put together with like machine sound effects. it's like electronic rock music yeah that's kind of how i would um, describe it. i will say i'm not a huge fan of the the newer nine inch nail stuff i don't i want him to scream i need him to scream like the fragile album dude one of the newer great. songs that he put out i swear he was screaming for just one long scream for the whole fucking song, and I did not fuck with it. Yeah. But you, you probably would have loved it. I don't know. What's yours, none? You know, I, I, I didn't prepare an answer for that question. <laughs> the only things that filtered into that was Bob Marley, Incubus, and Head P.E. And Incubus and Head P.E., shout out to Joe Mons, is who got me hip to those. It's the only reason I ever would have listened to that. And out of those three, I would say Incubus was my favorite. But, like, after that, like, now I listen to way more than just hip-hop is Banks, probably. That's not hip hop. It's not a bad choice. It's hard but for it me could to be, pick an it artist. Could, it could be Lord. It could be Melanie. It could be like last year. It would have been Melanie. Yeah. It could be FKA Twigs easily, depending on what she's about to do. I mean, there's a lot. Would um, you consider the weekend a non hip hop oh. artist? The weekend is a non hip hop artist, sort of. And if that's the case, then it, it would probably have to be the weekend. It's hard for me to base a decision like that off of uh, a limited amount of or like Catalog. without having a, uh, well, an see, that's what catalog. I'm saying is because I, I haven't had a long period of time like you've been listening to non-hip-hop shit your whole life mm -hmm. like once I discovered hip-hop I was just zoned in on that like I didn't there was a when I was younger I would be like ashamed to like yeah. white music like straight up and down like when Nirvana was popping I liked uh, I love Teen Spirit or Sm Smells Like Teen Spirit mm -hmm. and I wouldn't advertise that to the world that was like a guilty pleasure of my even though I should have just loved it because it was fucking dope but you know what I'm saying like yeah. that's how I used to that's what my mindset was when I was, I was stupid as fuck I was listening to some dumbass white music I mean I still do I mean <laughs> <laughs> dumbass white music and now it's time for the breakdown do you want to do it acapella first or do you want to do it over the beat lucky if I remember it in the pocket <laughs> yeah I'm still the worst, I'm still the worst I was ill and I was killing and it still occurs I ain't real concerned with rap as far as skill concern I kill a mic, I kill a mic, they fulfill the burn Real or burn, that keep me cooler than a pillow turn Drift away, dismiss the hate and let the real emerge Real version of my God has been revealed in earth If you can dig it, shovels up and help refill the dirt That's how I'm feeling now it's about rebuilding now First show some love to that which was And put it in the ground Wake up, it's been a while I can fuck with any style Hit the road, rip a show with the flow For the old motherfuckers went many miles Shout out them silly girls And that stupid guy Who threw about 22 to the sky Like it's a milli eye And give a fuck cause I was dancing On the ceiling, my oh my Was fucking really high And motherfucking really fly Who you know who think he fly As if he ill is all it was I, I'm so slick, got a high one eye, fall one eye, when a fly come by, come find out how I got so much of the goddamn nugs while the cones roll up, but I got too drunk cause I'm old as fuck, but I'm not grown up, of course I throw it up, bitch I'm ill as fuck, my kid game sick, bitch step it up, of course I'm overdressed, ho I'm fresh as fuck, and J-Mo is still J-Mo in my sippy cup, I don't give a fuck, I'll rep that breakfast club, I got some whiskey by the hit me in my sippy cup, said I don't give a fuck, I rep that breakfast club, I got some whiskey about to hit me in my sippy cup, Ooh, old as fuck but I'm not grown up, oh, old as fuck but I'm not grown up, oh, old as fuck but I'm not grown up, oh, old as fuck but I'm not grown up, oh, old as fuck but I'm not grown up, oh, old as fuck but I'm not grown up, oh, old as fuck but I'm not grown up, oh,
So you can tell how dated this verse is when you make the the, the Burns, the uh, Killer Mike and uh, Killer Field, Mike and Bernie Sanders yeah, reference. Yeah. Burn <laughs> reference. Yeah. Don't throw references in your verses, kids. Uh, you won't be able to use it years later. No, I mean, if we would have recorded this sooner, then it would have been it would have made more sense. I'm still the worst. I'm still the worst. I was illin', I was killin', and it still occurs. I ain't real concerned with rap as far as skill concern. I kill em, Mike, kill em, Mike. They fulfill the burn. That's four, right? I'm still the worst. Okay, we used to rap, like, for real, like, back in the day. Like, did almost 100 shows. You know we almost did, like, 100 shows, right? Mm -hmm. You know, opened up for a bunch of big names and shit that I won't even name because that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> because you know, all that means is that they think you can bring, you can sell tickets. It doesn't yeah. mean that you're talented. So stop bragging about opening up for motherfuckers. <laughs> but anyways, um, <laughs> facts. So I'm still the worst. I'm still the worst. I was ill and I was killing and it still occurs. I ain't real concerned with rap as far as skill concerned. Like I already know that I'm dope as fuck. That's not even to be debated. I don't the only thing that's tell me. I don't know how to promote shit and do all this and I'm fucking old and shit, but as far as skill concerned, I'm not worried about it. I kill him, Mike. I kill him, Mike. They fulfill the burn. Now, obviously, this is a killer Mike campaigning for Bernie Sanders reference. Fill the burn. Real old burning, keep me cooler than a pillow turn. That's kind of a shout out to Stuart Scott, rest in peace, a sports center anchor who would always say, cooler than the other side of the pillow. That's why. <laughs> he didn't say it like that. He sounded a bit cooler. Um, so, Real old burning, and Real old burning is Doug Ref. Can I, I can't talk about that. It's a Doug reference. <laughs> it's a forest fire. It, that's what keeps me cool. Drift away, dismiss the hate, and let the real emerge. Ain't worried about no negativity, good vibes only. A realer version of my God has been revealed in earth. I think that people should worry more about earth than God. Yeah. Obviously. How anyone doesn't get that is fucking retarded. <laughs> a realer version of my God has been revealed. That's facts. <laughs> facts. <laughs> if you can dig, it shovels up and help refill the dirt. Like, if you if you dig what I'm saying, then join me. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's how I'm feeling now. It's about rebuilding now. First show some love to that which was and put it in the ground. Wake up, it's been a while. I can fuck with any style. Hit the road, rip a show with the flow for the old motherfuckers went many miles. So that's so, bringing back the show reference. or Yeah, that's back from earlier. Well, I didn't reference shows earlier, but well, I mean, I was just trying to prove the point. Like, I go. used to do this, like, I'm still, and I'm still doing this. That's how I'm feeling now. It's about rebuilding now. You know, if we don't start now, the fucking environment's fucked. You know the environment's fucked. We all know that. Yeah. First show some love to that which was and put it in the ground. Like, it's okay to appreciate the life that you lived before you obtain this knowledge. Mm -hmm. But it's time to do something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, if you still litter in this fucking day and age, you, you are a fucking piece of shit. Dude, I see that shit all the time. Remember when we lived at Abbey Carry Run? on. No, <laughs> as you would remember say. when we lived at Abbey Run when we was roommates and that bitch that lived in the building with us, she would go get fast food, sit in her car, eat the food, and then throw the trash outside of her car door 10 feet away from a fucking dumpster and then walk into her apartment and just leave the shit there. This is a real thing that really happened. Anyways, yeah. first of all, some you love people to that. fucking disgust me. <laughs> first show some love to that which was and put it in the ground. Wake up, it's been a while. I can fuck with any style. Yeah, I can fuck with any style. Hit the road, rip a show with the flow for the O, motherfuckers win many miles. Mm -hmm. For the O, obviously for Ohio. Yeah. And we did do shows from Southern Ohio to Michigan. Anyways, but we did hit the road in a sense. Shout out them silly girls. And that stupid guy who threw about 20 to the sky like it's a milli eye and give a fuck as I was dancing on the ceiling. My oh my was fucking really high and motherfucking really fly. Now this is a, actually a specific reference to a show that we did in Sandusky where they had like a club night going. Like it was like a typical club night and for some reason they let us perform. Do you remember this? Were you there? And so we just like interrupted these people's club night to perform oh. our songs and they did not fuck with us at all. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Like, they came there to dance and shit, and we come up here spitting just cypher rhyme Fucking shit. Fucking a handful of white rappers just going on Yeah, stage. just out of nowhere. Just like out of It was nowhere. basically like, we did one show there because we opened up for Tech 9 I think. Mm. And bleep his name out. Um, anyways, we opened up for Dude, and they liked our show. Yeah. And then they wanted us back, so they didn't realize, like, oh, well, oh, you have a club so night every nice. Thursday. You can't just interrupt what people normally do mm -hmm. to, like, okay, now you're about to listen to some local rappers. Like, they didn't give a fuck. Yeah. 
but anyways, somebody was throwing money in the crowd that night, like trying to stun on us or some shit. Like I remember this, and that's what that reference is to. The, shout out them silly girls and a stupid threw guy who threw about twenty. Sky, like it was literally million. one dollar bills, like he was at yeah. a strip club. Threw about twenty to the sky, like it was a million, like it's a milli eye. Ain't give right. a fuck, cause I was dancing on the ceiling. My oh my, was fucking really high, which is fact. Who you know who think he fly as if he ill as I, ill as I. I'm so slick, gotta hide one eye. Four one nine, wanna fly? Come by, come find out how I got so much of the goddamn nugs while the cones roll up. I done got too drunk cause I'm old as fuck, but I'm not grown up. Bring Slick Rick back. Yeah, Slick Rick, here we go. Uh, who you know who think he fly as if he ill as I. Ill as I isn't something that Slick Rick said, but it sounds like something he would say. You know, like ill as I. Arrogant. Or, yeah, he's yeah. referring to himself. Ill as I, ill as I, that's why I said it twice. I'm so slick, gotta hide one eye because obviously. Even chandeliers jealous of the patch eye glitter. <laughs> <laughs> 419 area code wanna fly come by come find out how I got so much of the goddamn nugs while the cones roll up I done got too drunk cause I'm old as fuck but I'm not grown up you're getting ambitious like oh yeah we're about to smoke all this blah 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 but you forget that you're old and you can't handle your alcohol as well as you thought you could and you're too drunk by the time you even got the shit prepared cause you're old as fuck but you're not grown up and that's facts and then it goes into the chorus he goes in the hood. And I killed it, didn't I? Didn't I? I killed it. Hell yeah. I gotta try and remember my shit. No, that was good. The flow over that over that beat, it's fun. I mean, much like... Dude, much like dude okay. Shit. We're talking about... Talking about Melanie. This beat in particular, come on, you gotta give it up for this beat. This oh. beat is very interesting. Oh, for sure. This is not, you're not gonna find this in, in your traditional hip hop song. That's no. what's great about doing this side dish shit. Mm -hmm. And I, I know y'all fuck with it too. Melanie Martinez, look her up. Alright, so I'm gonna hit this beat back. Oh. Melanie, I'm ready. She started a live video. Awesome. <laughs> live, live Instagram. You ever accidentally went into someone's live video and you're like, oh, I, oh, I, shit, almost feel like can, I almost feel like, like they can see me. Like, I'm like, <laughs> You're like, I, oh, fuck. Sorry. You already got 2,000 other dudes looking at you. <laughs> I'm going to back up right quick. Anyways, all right. It's really bad. It's still real bad. It's a calculated risk. Can we ill in fact? Every flow is nasty. Sick, feel the glass. It's the course, of course. We keep it smooth like Teddy Pendergrass. Butterballs and vans in the bag. Nigga vanish. Goddamn fam. Got the upper hand here. It's something you can't understand. How I can just kill a man. See you mad. we ass. We smile in your face and tell you to fuck off. So sad. No swag. You're all dressed up with nowhere to go. Stress on the low. J-Mo. Better pull me. No rest. More love for the lonely. Control your shorty. Don't try to demonize my pride. Your fire side of the story, dress on the floor, so for the story, full press, score on the goalie, behold the glory, won't apologize, go possess the prize and hold on to the trophy, I approach it with the mind on blast, down the old fashioned, line of throat, both know what we want with the eye contact, I call that the kaleidoscope, we design the flow, go beyond the sky, as we go, rarely known, when I get high, oh, we gon' get fly, put your phone in airplane mode, dead devil, free falling in love land, no fear girl, no, but ain't nothing, reverse cowgirl, top of this Mustang, make you look, no hands when I stop man. Only know how to fly. Yeah, let do the buys. No matter how low you are, you gotta let go to rise. Course I'm overdressed. Oh, I'm fresh as fuck. <laughs> this oh, is that verse is jam. so nasty. Before you even break it down, the part where you say dress on the floor, so for the stove, flip on the floor, on the, oh, on the, oh, that's just yeah. so stupid, dog. Yeah, I'm definitely proud of this verse. I almost wish it was over an original beat. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you like, wouldn't have got that verse out over. I know. That's, that's what's the thing. Up. That's what's that's dope what's real about jacking these beats. Like people hate on jacking beats. Go and buy all the beats you want. You're not gonna buy this beat. You're not gonna buy this beat. You got a million dollars, motherfucker. Hundred. Thousand, you ain't buying this beat. You can't. Early on in our career, we was fucked because we never used our own original beats, and I regret that and shit. But at the same time, it's like I fell in love remaking other people's songs. You know what I'm saying? Like because yeah. those beats are just fire. But carry on. I'm getting off track. It's really bad. It's still real bad. It's a calculated risk. Yeah, we ill and fat. Every flow is nasty. Sick. Feel the glass. It's the course. Of course, we keep it smooth like Teddy Pendergrass. So those first two bars is playing off of what. Uno did with his verse where he said I'm still the worst I'm still the worst sure, no. so I played off of that it's really bad it's still real bad it's a calculated risk so even though we bad we bad it's a calculated risk yeah we ill in fact every flow is nasty sick feel the glass glass representing Toledo glass we keep it smooth like Teddy Pendergrass you know you know, you know I love the way that flows too keep it smooth like Teddy Pendergrass you just go back yep, and forth exactly. like so it's and then, fucking uh, nasty 
butter bars and vans in the bag the advantage goddamn fam got the upper hand here is something you can't understand how i could just kill a man so was that four was that what was that two how i could just kill a man see you man whereas we smile in your face and tell you to fuck off so sad no swag you're all dressed up with nowhere to go it, that's biggie right all dressed up with nowhere to go is he the one that said that i, don't I can't remember where that where but I know the from. how I could just kill a man. But I know that I didn't come up with that first. I definitely just used that. Here is something you can't understand how I could just kill a man. That's Cypress Hill. Yeah, Cypress Hill. I love being able to bring that up. As dark as she can be over a pop song, you know what I'm saying? Like saying something like that. Here's something you can't understand how I could just kill a man yeah. over, over something like that. I love being able to say that. Butter bars and vans in the bag. The advantage, goddamn fam, got the upper hand. We got the upper hand. We got the advantage because we got butter bars. And if you don't know what butter bars are, <laughs> that's, that's kind of like a double entendre because because our, 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 our flow, our, our bars are... Our butter. Butter. <laughs> but butter also comes in bars. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And Vans in the Bag. Gold bars. Vans in the exact. Bag, if you don't know, we're, we're huge Vans, Vans fans. So. Vans advocates. Vans advocates. And I ain't never skateboarded a day in my life, and I don't care how you feel about that. Oh, no. Oh. Vans, you, you get it. You get it. Off the wall, you know what I'm saying? Vans. You get it. You get it. Vans advocates. You gotta cut that in again. You get it. You get it. You still got that clip? <laughs> yeah. I'll make it nice. <laughs> See you mad whereas we smile in your face and tell you to fuck off. So sad, no swag, you're all dressed up with nowhere to go. I think all that kind of speaks for itself, right? Yeah. Smile in your face, tell you to fuck off. Stress on the low. I love how that flow is, by the way. Which one? Yeah, all dressed up with nowhere to go. Stress, Stress on the low, low. J Mo better, better pull me. <laughs> full press. So stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Stress on the low, J Mo better pull me. No rest, more low for the lonely. Control your shorty. Don't try to demonize my pride to purify your side of the story. Dress on the floor. Soul full of stoli. Full press. Score on the goalie. Behold the glory. Won't apologize. Go possess the prize and hold on to the trophy. Just because there's a goalie doesn't mean I can't score. Exactly. <laughs> So I think you questioned my uh, my full press line because full press that's typically a, a basketball reference, right? Full yeah. press. I think it was field hockey. Did they do a full press? Yes. I mean, they might do a full press in soccer, for all I know, because it is similar to basketball. Yeah. But I'm just saying, full press. The term I know full press for it is from basketball. Soul full of stoli. Stoli is stoliknaya, right? Or stoliknaya or whatever the fuck. It is. It, yeah, it's vodka. How do you pronounce it? I, I don't know, Stoli. I stopped there. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's like S T O L I C H N A Y A. Stoliknaya. Stoliknaya. So, so want to apologize? Go possess the prize and hold on to the trophy. So, like a trophy wife, go possess the prize and hold on to the trophy. These bars, these next few bars, or the next eight bars rather, bars that I had over the genuine pony beat for the track oh, of 97. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I just thought about that song earlier today too because somebody mentioned genuine. I approached to put the mind on blast down the old fashioned line the throat both know what we want with the eye contact I call that the kaleidoscope both catch each other looking at each other so kaleidoscope like we're looking so our, our vision you're colliding, colliding. Your, your scopes are colliding but Correct. also like you have to make eye contact with a kaleidoscope yeah. and I'm just not putting that together old fashioned is a, is a drink if you haven't had one I definitely recommend it it is a very good very good drink I've ever had you can one actually one. test your bartender's capabilities or, or their talents by how well they can make an old fashioned I'm going to throw that little nugget out there for you. We designed a float, go beyond the sky. Heights we go, rarely known. Want to get high or we going to get fly? Put your phone in airplane mode. Uh-huh, that's twisted like Christmas. Life. Daredevil, free fall in the love land. Reverse cowgirl, top of this Mustang. Make you look no hands when I stunt, man. Right? Only know how to fly. Yeah, the dude abides. So that's like a big Lebowski reference. So the dude abides. No matter how low you are. Yeah, no matter how low you are, you gotta let go to rise. So you can't you can't hang on to that dumb shit and expect to move forward or progress forward. So that, that's that verse. I love how both of our verses go over this beat. I mean, the flow. I I'm glad there's some songs to where you have your verse done first. That way. I can build off of it. You yeah, know what I'm and you know, now that, that you flow. say something, this song is probably one of the most where we're adjacent to each other. This song's nasty as fuck. Like, that beat is just dope as fuck. If you're a good rapper and you write to this beat, you can't write a bad verse to this beat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no way. If I can really compare it to anything right now, I mean, our phone tap versus is kind of the same way. I think I had my 
verse, and then you built yours off of that. Is that right? Because I had the sword, uh, I had the awesome. sword references and whatnot, and then you kind of tied that all. Oh together. yeah, yeah, you did do it first, and then you had like the violent theme. Like I didn't follow your flow at all, but I just knew it had to be like dark and violent for no reason. <laughs> and then playing off of the hook, you know, the sword slash instead of phone tap. But the shit that we got going over that dice beat. That's about to be swagged <sighs> out, maxed out. I thought you knew what that about. Back down. That shit's gonna be real fun. <laughs> Dice one time though. Dice with two eyes, look them up. Nasty, nasty. You should probably just throw them all your money. <laughs> <laughs> That's the verses. Oh, Julie's on the hook. Julie is on the hook. Yeah. I just kind of redid what I wrote for the hook for Julie, right? Yeah, she sings the parts that you had. I originally was just doing myself, but I just changed a couple lyrics, and then she made it to the melody of what Melanie did. And it's dope. This is one of our better side dish songs. My dude Jay downloaded all the side dish songs. He's been listening to them. He told me that 24 Karat Magic is his favorite, and Starboy is his second favorite. Like the first two I, think <laughs> I think 24 Karat is my favorite side dish right 24 now. 24 Karat is crazy. Like, after he said that, I, w I was thinking about it, and I was like, yeah, this song is fucking dope as fuck. We each got our own chorus, yeah. which is dope as fuck. And then the verses are just fucking destroyed on there, too. Problems I might know, be start with, I, Actually, I told that's what I told him. I was like, yeah, I feel that. I was like, 24 Karat is one of my favorites, but I think Problems is the best one. But, I mean, actually, it shows that Problems is the best one because it has the most attention on it. And it's because we were actually rapping about something real and not just kind of fucking around but we did that on drowning too though yeah you know, drowning is actually really good too uh, it's hard to pick a favorite of your own songs <laughs> you know what I'm saying? well yeah i mean especially at least now like, so we're good that it's just like you know, it's overwhelming <laughs> all right this is the deal pay attention we we got we got facts to go over these are mostly my ideas by the way <laughs> I'm take all the credit the side dish was my idea originally right mm -hmm. because of murder the beat i thought well let's just pick one beat instead of doing it weekly let's do it a month and that way we can pick whatever beat we want plus it's and easier we'll... for me because i can't do it once a week i got i got yeah, too much got life going on things to do <laughs> That was the idea, was to do a side dish. We pick an industry beat that we're gonna each write to once a month. And then we were still working on originals though. We were about to put out an album. But eventually that turned into the idea of just doing one song a month, period. Because I thought to myself, this is what we already have proven that we have time for because of the side dish that we've done for like six months now. Obviously you have enough time to do at least one song a month. So I figured, well, let's just focus on doing one song a month. Capitalize so that, on that. That turned into, and plus no one no one does that. Who else is doing that? Name somebody who's doing that. Everybody puts out albums. Actually, we kind of You're cheated. giving them our formula. Yeah, I, I'm going to give it away. <laughs> I, would lo I would love for other people to do this. And I'd love for people to do like the breakdown too. I love the creative process. I'd love to learn more about it. So that turned into like, let's just do one song a month. So we decided to do an industry beat every other month. So a side dish video every other month, and then we're gonna do an original beat every other month that we're not doing the industry beats. We needed to come up with a title for this, and we're going with food related shit because of main course, which is what spawned side dish. I also came up with the grand name. Are you ready? Are you ready for the announcement? Entree. 3,000. Perfect. Entree, 3,000. You might think that's a lame pun, and I might say fuck you, because I think it's glorious. I couldn't think of a more perfecter way to word it. <laughs> <laughs> more, it couldn't be more perfect. May is going to be the first month that we do this, and it's actually a double dose. Mm -hmm. Two original songs, with a video for one of those songs, at least. So uh, that wraps up the side dish for April. Thanks for watching. Um, Melanie Martinez, Sippy Cup. Stay tuned for the video. <laughs> That's not doing much for your LL Cool J comparison. I know, I fucking hate you. <laughs> Peace.